takes courage to make money, not money. That's why immigrants come to America and make money. They came with nothing except what? Courage. You lost your courage when you got in the middle class. The great things that have happened on this planet and continue to happen are because people are unreasonable. They literally abandon reason and logic. They defy the universe. Your parents were looking for 40 grand. It doesn't pay for anything today. So you need to change the way you think. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, it's Evan. My one word is believe and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I wanna see exploded onto the world. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from having ADD, drug addiction, and almost dying growing up to becoming a best-selling author, top sales expert, and having over half a billion dollars in real estate. He's Grant Cardone, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume five. Enjoy! All right, let's kick things off with rule number one, be courageous. How many heard the saying before, it takes money to... That's not true, it takes courage to make money. It takes courage to make money, not money. That's why immigrants come to America and make money. They came with nothing except what? Courage. You lost your courage when you got in the middle class. You trade your courage, I'm doing good. You think you're doing good till the bridge falls. Rule number two, my personal favorite, be unreasonable. The thing that I do at my company that is very unusual is that we are completely unreasonable without reason, without, we don't use, yes, I'm logical, Okay, yes, I'm a sane person, but when it comes to achieving a target, we, we do it with, like, we abandon reason and logic. We don't talk about, yeah, but, we never start, yeah, but, or no, we can't, or we couldn't because, or it didn't happen because. Any, anytime you're talking, anytime you're making sense of why something didn't work, we don't have the budget, we can't do that because, yeah, but we're different, you are being reasonable. The great things that have happened on this planet and continue to happen are because people are unreasonable. They literally abandon reason and logic. They defy the universe. Now, if you look around, if you're a logical person, if you're a person that has to make sense of it beforehand, then spend some time looking around the universe, look at nature, look at all the things that are done every day that literally defy gravity, defy possibility, defy physics. It's all over the place if you need to be reasonable. Now, in my case, I don't need to be reasonable because there's enough cases of super successful people doing things that are amazing, whether it was a manufacturing, a new product, or whether it was Steve Jobs coming back to Apple and turning that company around. Every day, every day, look at Amazon. Look what Amazon has done. Okay, now you look at it, you're like, dude, that's a no-brainer. Make, make all products available online. <laughs> Now it's a no-brainer. Now it's like, it's so logical. Look at Velcro. Velcro was like, God, I, I should have thought of that. See, but beforehand, it was completely out of reason that you could stick things together uh, because they scratch one another. You understand what I'm saying? So look, this is what I want you to try. Try this in your life. It's gonna be very difficult. It's one of the most difficult things I do is being unreasonable because all the people I'm surrounded by are trying to make sense of why they can't do something. Quit making sense of why you can't do something and become unreasonable until you do do something. Rule number three, show up. What are you gonna do when you wake up and you feel lost, you feel less than, you feel, you feel a sense of uh, either depression or despair and no direction? What I do is this. I show up, I show up, man. A buddy of mine told me when I was at the, at the, at the at a low, super low point in my life, he said, hey man, show up even if your life's, if your eyes are bleeding and your life is low, show up anyway, show up. Rule number four, think big. Bigger is better, how many agree with this? Okay, if you can live on 900 grand, 
The only people that won't go to nine million are the people that are selfish. Unselfish people grow their businesses. Selfish people don't. Okay, if you're taking notes, if you're going to walk away with something today, I'm talking to the able people here. Give me the name of a great company that has seven employees. I'm waiting. Give me the name of a great company that doesn't spend a load of money on advertising. Who is this company? Tell me, give me one name. One name of any company that's great. This small. See, see, see you, you built a business on a fantasy. Right? Like, I'm, I'm going to get a state form. I'm going to get a state form. I'm going to get an all-state company. I'm going I'm I'm to I'm be an all-state guy, and I'm going to make 900 grand a year. You're selfish, folks. See, see what I'm saying about the selfish person makes what they need. The unselfish person says, I'm going to make more than I need. Rule number five, work on yourself. I've been lost most of my life, literally the first 45 years of my life. The first probably 51 years of my life, first 45 years for sure, I was completely lost. And uh, somewhere between 45 and 51, I started figuring out, okay, what am I doing? I started sorting my life out. I started getting some, started doing some courses that really, really made a difference in my life. I've always been in a self-improvement my whole life. And, uh, but it wasn't until I was about 45 that I really started discovering information that could make me more confident, me more sure. You know, when I was 25 years old, I was a young salesperson and I didn't like sales and, and, I, and I got educated on how to sell and I became very, very good at it. Um, I started to understand the process, the customer, the objections, the rebuttals, how to follow up, how to handle the rejection and the disappointment, the discourage, how to get over it. But that didn't help me become more confident in me as a person, as an individual. I was making money. By the time I was 31, I had a couple businesses. They were making money. Probably had, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars saved when I was 30, 31 years old, because I was starting to make a little money, right? By the time I'm 33, I got a, probably a million dollars in a bank. I still didn't feel good about myself. I had this nagging, nagging, like, sense of desperation, anxiety, depression, uncertainty, a lack of confidence. And when I started working on me spiritually, that's, that's, when, that's when at 45, 46, 47 years old, that's when everything changed for me. Like everything, all the expansion, the, the confidence, the getting out in the world, the maybe a little better communicating than I was doing. I'm not perfect at it by any means now. And I started getting more certainty about who I am, what I am, where I'm going, and why I'm here. Like, if you don't figure those things out, no amount of money, no amount of money in the world will, will fill you up. No, the private planes won't, the fancy cars. You have to know where you're going. Rule number six, build a team. How do you do this? I started with one employee. His name was Grant Cardone. I knew him, and so I hired him, <laughs> right? He passed a drug test. I believed in him, and for 15 years, I was one guy. And then one day I woke up, a guy actually, a, a mentor of mine said, look, you can't scale with just yourself. You gotta start building a business here. If you're gonna have a real business, you need employees, you need people. You need to be willing to hire people. And I'm like, man, but I'm scared. They cost money. He's like, not making sales. One, two, three, four, these empty desks. That's what's costing me money. Okay, that's what's costing you money. Staying small is costing you money. All this costs money. I have failures here. I have disappointments. I have discouragements. I have people that work here for a little while and they quit. But you're not going to get big by yourself. Rule number seven, don't rest on your laurels. If you ask me to coach your business, I'm not going to think about how to hold on to what you did last year. That's what most people right now are thinking here in March. In January, you're like, this is going to be a great year. By March, you're like, man, I just want to do what we did last year. If we just do, you're starting to make sense. You're becoming reasonable. Okay, I'm telling you that because this is what your people do too. Okay, your people, the people that you hire, they make sense of how to make 48 grand a year. And if you have people in your company that are trying to make sense of how to make 48 grand a year, you got a company that's going to die. Toys R Us. Filed bankruptcy this week. iHeartRadio, the biggest radio station in the world, 
filed for bankruptcy this week. There's going to be massive disruption in the marketplace. Why? Because these companies thought about, they, they, kept, they kept having trophies about what they had rather than what, what they could get. Who's got money? Who's qualified to buy? How can I get their attention? How can I tell them what I want from them? Okay, how fast can I get to the marketplace? Fast, speed is the new big. Rule number eight, do more. You can do more. You can do more than you ever imagined. I was broke at 25 years old. Broke, okay? Every two years I get one of these cars. The people at Rolls Royce like, hey, we wanna send you another one of those cars, okay? How you want it? How you want to dress? What color you want it? Like, it's crazy. It's crazy the life I'm living right now. We did a, we did a conference. There was 10,000 people in the room and another 10,000 people online. All of them paid to be there. I remember when I couldn't get two people to show up at a party in high school because I was so disliked. You can do more than you think you can is my message to you today. You will live longer than you think, I promise you, okay? You can do more than you think you can. Rule number nine, go on the offense. Your parents were looking for 40 grand. It doesn't pay for anything today. So you need to change the way you think. How many of you were taught when you ate, when mama brought you a meal, she said this. She brought you the meal, threw it on the plate and said, eat it all. How many were told that? You know what she was trying to tell you? Don't waste money. That's what she was trying to say. What she was really saying is, I don't know how to make more money. She was really saying there's a shortage of money. Eat it all. There's people in China starving. How many of you got that message every day? How many of you, when you walked out of your bedroom, your mama said, turn off those lights? What was she telling you? I don't know how to get new money. That's what she was telling you. My dad died when I was 10. My mom was left to bring up five kids. Okay? And those are the messages I got every day. The same message was this. Contract. Get small. Back up. Protect yourself. I can't win anything like this. I cannot succeed for my family like this. I do not want my kids to see me like this. I want, the, I want my kids to see me on attack, right? Confidence in the marketplace. How do you get confidence? You read, man. You guys got to read, okay? The, the average American reads less than one book a year. Half those books are romance novels. Now, I, I don't have my books with me today, but we, I've written four books since 2009 for this new economy. I wrote those books for me. I didn't write them for other people. I did not write them to get known. I wrote those books because I was trying to figure out how do I get myself out of this problem? And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips, is have fun. I've been putting this off as long as I can. This whole, you know, this whole thing, there's no burnout. I'm starting to wonder, man, maybe there's some burnout because I've been feeling tired, been beat, beat up, been dragging. I'm starting to really question some of the stuff I've been telling you guys for a long time about the whole 10X everything, go to the next level, freaking you can do more. It's about time, it's been a long time coming. I've been doing a lot of reflecting about it, saying, hey, I need to tell people I think I've been wrong on this thing. I am a candle in the wind. You know, you can burn out. It's not worth all the work. And, and the whole 10X thing, all you guys have bought the 10X rule, and you're like, I gotta go 10X? Man, I don't know, man. The whole TARDIS in the hair, you know, you just keep showing up. I'm telling you, I'm thinking, I'm rethinking the whole deal. And, and, and for those of you who've been following me for a long time, jumping on that bandwagon, I'm telling you, you gotta shut it down. I'm shutting it down now, okay? I'm taking a break on social media. I'm taking a break on all the interviews. I'm taking a break on all the podcasts. Get off these freaking 80, 100 hour weeks. Grind for the money. Selling my plane. Getting rid of the car. Scaling down everything. Everything. I'm gonna get rid of all my debt. I'm just going back to freaking old school. Take it easy. And uh... April Fool's Day, <laughs> In fact, I tell you what I'm gonna do. Let me tell you what I'm gonna do. First of all, I'm getting a new car. I'm ordering a damn thing today. It's gonna be, if you, if with your permission, it's gonna be white. Oh damn! I can't open it up. It's gonna be white. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it white. I'm gonna have it white. 
on white with red piping all over the place. Red dashboard, it's gonna blow up. It's gonna scream when I go, I'm getting a new plane. I'm gonna get a new, freaking, I'm gonna go from nine passengers to like 13 or 14. It's gonna be sick. Now I've got an awesome bonus clip from Grant on how to discipline yourself that I think you're really gonna enjoy. But before that, I wanna know, what did you learn from this video today? What was the single most important lesson that you're going to take and apply to your life, to your business? Leave it down in the comments below. When you write it down, you're making a commitment to improve. And so write it down, feel the satisfaction, and then go make a change. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon and enjoy the bonus clip. How do you control? How do you discipline? How do you start monitoring what you're saying to yourself? I can't find the right girl. I can't find the right guy. A marriage is hard. I'm broke, I'm poor. It's gonna be hard if you don't change your mind. You gotta change the way you think. And a way to change the way you think. First of all, the one way is to start discipline yourself. Catch yourself every time you say, I don't have time, say, hey, I create time. Every time you say, I don't have money, I create money. Literally like talking to yourself, hey, I am a millionaire. So if you're broke right now, quit saying I am broke and start saying what you want. Where are you going? It's not complicated. You want to get rich? I got rich. You want to get rich? You can Nothing and no one stopping you from doing that, but the information in your head. Raise your standard. Apple at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Hey Believe Nation, if you want to see my all-time favorite top 10 rules of success, I have a very special secret video for you. These are the individual clips that I have personally learned the most from and applied to my life and my business. Check the link in the description for details.